Howdy folks, Don Bruce here again. So, in our last video we ended up splitting off a bunch of faces from the body, and I split the doors off, but after second thought I decided that probably wouldn't be good. I mean, you're going to have the jank of the door clipping through that pinstriping thing, and then you're going to have this one clipping through the side fender. I figured if the creator didn't make it to where the doors actually could open, be realistically, it's probably best I don't make them do that in-game either. But we can at least go and explore the rotating of the steering wheel and the pedals and all that other fun stuff. So, we'll have something in terms of rotation, and we'll talk about doors in a later video. So, right now, of course, we've got everything split off. And now, of course, we have some lights and some steering wheels and everything. So there really isn't any particular naming convention for the rotatable bits. So we're going to go and name them however we want. I'll just call this guy here steering wheel. And this one here, these two box thingy entry things, have to match exactly. If they don't match, then it's going to corrupt your names when Blender exports it or do something even nastier. So always make sure these match. And in fact, if you were to copy body model, it would add suffixes and change everything. So triple check that before you export things. If you have a different system of exporting stuff and it comes right from, say, a block bench or a FMT, then this may not apply. So anyways, we have that. I'm going to call that gas because that's the gas pedal. And then this one is going to be the brake. And then this one can be the gear shift. And you know what? We could, instead of making it the clutch, which it probably is, we could make it the parking brake. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that, just because that way you have a visual representation of the parking brake is on or not. I'm going to call that P brake, parking brake. Lovely. And so we got steering wheel, gas brake. Okay, so good. So all these rotatable bits are uh, named correctly, so we know what they are. Now it's time to go and make changes to the lights. So the lights have to be named a certain way in order to get them to work. And the way you name them depends on what you want them to do. So looking at this vehicle, and we can go back into texture mode, it's clear we have brake lights, we also have headlights, and I will note these would be turn signals or running lights. My guess is that they're going to be turn signals, so we'll go ahead and code those to be turn signals, in which case this is going to be a turn signal and a brake light combination back here. I'll show you how to do that. But, so we'll have headlights and brake lights and turn signals. So, let's start with the turn signals. So you have this turn signal here, and of course we're going to have to name it, and it can't be body model. And the way you name it is based on the light naming convention. So I'm going to pull up the handbook here, which is an excellent thing to have if you are working with packs, and we'll go down to lights. And so lights are, have like this little and sign, and then they have a name, and then they have different parameters. And so what we want for the front is we want a left turn light for cars, which comes on with a left turn signal. So we're going to go ahead and the first part of this is going to have to be a Let's actually go back to object or solid mode and make sure we have the right thing. Yes, we. Nope. There we go. Yes, we got that one. So we're going to start off with left turn light. And again, you have to put the little and sign. And then you have an underscore. And so this is going to be XXXXX. And then you know, the Y's and the Z's. So the first thing's the name. The second thing is the hexadecimal color of the light. Now, this is if you want your light to shine a little bit different color than what's on the texture. We do want it to shine the color that's on the texture. So we could go try and find the hexadecimal color that looks closest to that, or we can cheat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open this, uh, I don't know which one is, fresh orange one, and GIMP. And GIMP's going to go ahead and do its loading, 
And it's loading. And lovely. And so let's go find out. Quit that gimp. Come on, zoom in. Where, oh where are my headlight textures? Could be there. Could be those, yeah. That, in fact, it does look like them. So we're going to zoom in here. We're going to go to the eyedropper. Uh, color pick, oh lovely. And so then we're going to go in here and we're going to see what hex... There we are, FF, FFCC. So that's the hexadecimal color it used. So we go back into Blender. No, we don't need a scout. And we're going to name it FFFFCC. Then we need to go figure out what the uh, blink rate is. Now, we don't want the, well, we do want the left turn light to blink. And so the question is, is how fast do you blink it? And so this is going to be t basically the one second. And normally vehicles that are older blink slower. And so I'm just going to set it to be, uh, well, what the heck is that on there? This looks like Don made an oops on the handbook. But, uh... Anyways, we're just going to go and use this, because this was supposed to be like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 10 ones and then 10 zeros are going to be FFC0, and it's on for 10 ticks and off for 10 ticks, which is a nice steady slow blink rate. So I'm going to put that over there, and you know that's going to bother my OCD, so we're going to go ahead and fix that. FFFFCC. It doesn't matter if it's capital or not, but it matters to me. So then you have that. Now you have this. So this is going to basically be one or zero. So it could be one, 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 or one, one, zero, one, zero, one. And this basically says what part of the light we want to render. So the first here says, do we render the lens flare? Well, yes, we want to render the little flare, nice bright spot for this turn signal. So I'm going to put a one here. Then the, do we render the color that we specified when the light is on? Uh, yes. Then do we want a glass cover over the light to make it fancy? Of course we want a fancy light. And this fourth one here is if you have beam settings and you don't have to include it for things that don't have beams and since turn signals don't have beams, we're not going to include it. So we're just going to put that right there. Lovely. Then of course we got to go to this other light. And that's just going to be pretty much the same thing except we're going to call it right turn light. And a right turn light. And so then we have that. Now let's go on to the headlights. So headlights are going to be a little bit different. And because the problem with headlights is whenever you turn a headlight on, it goes and renders a beam. And if you were to turn this headlight on right here, it would render three beams. We don't want that. We only want it to render one beam. And also looking at this, that should be a headlight too, but it's not part of the same shape. So what we're going to do is First of all, we're going to just go ahead and uh, combine this shape and this shape, because they should be the same. They're both headlights. And the second thing we're going to do then is we're going to take this face here, which is going to render our beam, and this face here, which is going to render our beam, and we're going to split those into different faces. And it'll become why, you know, uh, apparent why in a moment. But for the moment, we've got these four little, little spots on this particular body model. And so... No, that's the inner ones. See, dang it, Blender, why you gotta play with me like that? Okay, so we have these. And then we have, uh, where is it, this guy. So we're gonna focus on this guy first. These are our two headlights. So again, we're gonna need the light names, and this is not gonna be right turn. This is going to be headlight. Let's go make sure we have the right formatting. Do, 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 navigation light. Headlight, okay, so it's, okay. Now we don't want this yellowish texture for that. We want it to be all white and bright, so we can do FF. We also don't want it to blink. And of course we want our glass, we want our flare, we want everything else, so lovely stuff for the headlights. Now, if you come down here to these particular parts of the headlight, we don't want these to have a flare but we want them to basically match 
these headlights right up here. So what you can do is you can come down here and add this extra zero. And what that's going to do is right here when it talks about the light parts, the fourth number is optional. If set, it will override the beam setting for this light to either render if it's a one or disable if it's a zero the beam. And so in this case, we're saying, hey, this is a headlight. You're going to come on with that other little spot of texture is on, but you're not going to render a beam. And in fact, we probably don't want it to render a flare either, because then you'll have a bunch of lens flares there. And so we're going to go ahead and put a zero on that as well. And so what that'll do is you're going to get a little glass texture over all of that. And then you're going to end up with a lens flare on just this one center one and then bright spots on the other. So lovely stuff. So there's our headlights. There's our turning lights. That's the whole front end taken care of. Now we got to go take care of the back end. So the back end, of course, uh, the problem is, is that we have to have both a brake light and a turn signal if we want to have the turn signal match on the front. But you can only have one light named one thing. So what we're going to use is if you come over here, you have a brake light, which comes on when the brake is pressed. You have a, a right turn light and a left turn light. But you also have a left indicator right light and a right indicator light. And the only difference between these two lights are is they come on only when the brake light is off. So basically what that means is if you have your brakes on, the brake light will show up. If you have your left and your right indicator lights on, then they'll only start blinking when the brakes aren't pressed. So basically it means is if you're stepping on the brakes, that's going to override your turn signals. If you're not stepping on the brakes, then your turn signals will blink. And the idea is that... Uh, because your indicator lights here are on and will blink only when the brake light is off, you won't end up with funky double blinking. So let's first of all make those brake lights because they're both brake lights. And then we also need to make the indicators. So let's actually let's make the indicators first and I'll show you why in a moment. So we need this to be the left indicator light. And again, you have to prefix it with an AND symbol. We want it to be red, so it'll be FF0000. We don't want it to blink, so that'll be FFFFF. And we want it to do everything else normal, so that'll be a 111. And, oh, it ran up there. Again, left indicator light. And then now let's go grab the right indicator light. and then the right indicator light. So now we have these guys blinking, but they won't come on when the brakes are on. So all you gotta do is select them, hit the P key, and this is gonna be kind of funky. So you select them, and you can go to Object, Duplicate Objects, and so that's gonna duplicate these lights. And we're just gonna hit Escape because we don't wanna move them. And let's see if that's going to no, it's not going to duplicate them. Come on. I don't want to duplicate the objects and move them. I just want to duplicate them. If I don't hit... There. <laughs> you don't just don't touch the mouse and you hit enter and you should be okay. So you have these guys here. And actually we're going to hit control J to join them together. Because... Right, it's, hopefully I didn't screw that up. Right indicator light... Yeah, so see how it did a funky thing? It took the left indicator light here and then like renamed it and then renamed those two we made. It, that's why it's being kind of squirrely. So we'll just, let, let's take this indicator light and rename it because the blender wants to be smart. Don't you, blender? Make sure that's named right. We'll turn that invisible so we don't accidentally click on it. And we'll go ahead and turn the right indicator light invisible as well, so we don't actually click on that. And where did that guy come from? I didn't want to duplicate that, did I? Oh, it didn't join them. Okay. Uh, see, that's why you hide them. 
lovely, lovely. So which one is the real right indicator light? See, this is why indicators are a pain and why it's just better to model a brake light and a turn signal individually, because then you don't have to go through this pain. So this right indicator light, yeah, that's the right one. And then you have this guy, which is there. Make that guy invisible. Okay, so I got the right and then the left. We're going to join them. Now, did I do something wrong? Again, Blender's not my forte. I apologize. But this looks looks okay. So you have the... Ooh, did I... No, I didn't make that one joint. Okay, good. There, so that's invisible. Now we should have... Yes, okay, see, what I was looking for is the little hole to appear because it means both my indicators are invisible and my new ones aren't. So now we can delete that and just call it brake light. There we go. And then we can make these guys come visible again and we'll be able to uh, be able to see everything. And for some reason we have two left indicator lights. Well, uh, yeah, we don't need that. Go away. <coughs> Right indicator light, right turn light, left indicator right, left turn light. Okay, yeah, that looks uh, that looks about right. Yeah, right and left. So now this model is pretty much ready to go in game. Uh, of course, there's some things you have to do actually now to set up the pack, but I'd say this model is actually pretty much drivable. So in the next tutorial. We'll go over how to set up a pack and put everything into it, and we'll go ahead and launch it and place down the model and game as kind of an initial starting place, and then we can start configuring things from there. For the moment, this is Don Bruce signing off.